This video is going to tell you guys 10 tips that you need to know in order to perform better in PvE and if you're looking to reach at least level 40 in Yama's Abyss. Whether you're a beginner or a semi-experienced player, stay tuned because these tips will be beneficial. I play Yushan in PvE and I have hit Paragon, which is the max rank in Yama's Abyss. These are the tips I'm willing to give you. Tip number one is learn the movement in Naraka. I can't exaggerate this enough when I say that movement is close to the number one thing you need to know to have an easier time in PvE. So go into training mode and get used to the movement. I can make a movement video if requested enough in the comment section, but movement is important for all bosses in PvE, especially for Matron of Yushan and all of the Omnius bosses. Tip number two is memorize every boss. This is self-explanatory, but specifically learn when the boss releases a blue focus and pay close attention to the animations of the boss because they do change a bit depending on how high level the boss is. If you struggle with parrying, I already have a video showing easier ways to parry in PvP which also apply to PvE. Tip number 3. Focus on one character until you reach level 20 on that character. You absolutely need to have a level 20 character to complete high levels in PvE because being level 20 gives you all the attack defense, defuse, and weapon jade abilities. And all chemical crystallized souls can boost your character level quickly if you have a lot of them as well. These can be gained through in-game events. Tip number four, do not focus on Astro Aegis. Breaking the Astro Aegis of a boss is good, but lowering the health of the boss is actually what kills the boss, not the Astro Aegis. So use things that can lower the health of the boss faster. Which leads to my next tip, Tip number five, build attack percentage as much as you can. When it comes to choosing anima rings and certain soul jades, if they have an attack percent to them, 90% of the time you want to choose those soul jades over other jades. It's mainly up to what you are scaling with your rings and your jades, but always try to get as much damage percent as possible. Tip number six, use elemental damage. Divine lightning and ice blast effects are not bad. Without elemental damage, I'm 100% sure you will struggle more in PvE. Me personally, I only use Divine Lightning, but it's up to you and what you like to use. Just choose one of the elements, and don't try to stack both of them. Just go all in on one element type. If you're building Thunder Wielding, and you see a Sojid with Ice Wielding on it, do not use it unless you feel you absolutely need it to complete the level. Now, tip number 7, use Hone status whenever it's possible. Honed is just as important as building an element type. Use the potential tree and spin your points into things that would give you honed status. So I would recommend upgrading the green side of the tree first. This is what my tree looks like right now. Tip number 8. Specifically for the Yama's Abyss, equip the Sojays you want to see in your run. The Sojays that you have on normally don't automatically apply in the Abyss, but the ones that you equip are the ones that are most likely to appear but it's not guaranteed that they will appear. So whatever soja you equip, you also want to apply the correct element you're looking for onto the jade by using essence. And now, tip number 9, specifically for the Yama's Abyss, do not ignore money. I would say that money is the third most important thing you need to build in your runs, underneath building attack and elemental damage, but if you have anima rings that don't really benefit you that much, then you have to skip them and turn them into money so that you can re-roll them in a rift dealer. Anima rings that decrease rift dealer prices are also good, but it's situational if you take it or not. But normally, it is a good option to take. Now for the last tip, number 10. It's not really a tip, but more of me telling you from experience that anima rings are what make or break your runs in the abyss. This is the best tip I can give, honestly. Without rings, you can't enhance your attack damage or elemental damage, so your run is basically dead without damage enhancing rings. And you will notice this the further you go into the abyss. But here is a bonus tip. Tip number 11. Use the void space level 25 to farm potential XP and ring collections. Sense level is important as well as potential tree levels and the bonus effects you get for getting collections of undiscovered rings. So if you are looking for fast levels on your tree or soldiers, 
just use void space level 25. Thank you guys for watching, leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video, and I will see you guys in the next one.